Hello, and welcome to this MedMont Topographer orientation on the Attributes window. This video will attempt to uncover the Attribute Analysis Display options along with their clinical and contact lens application. My name is Randy Kojima. To display the attributes on your main MedMont window, select a map or maps, then go to View and select Image. Under Display, make sure the right is selected so the Attributes window will be visible. We will review how to customize this window near the end of this video, but right now let's start with the case. Here we can see a very normal topography. Nothing incredibly interesting about this eye, but let's go over to the Attributes window and see if there's anything that we can understand about this cornea beyond it just being a regular eye shape. Well, of course, I think everyone is comfortable with K readings. We have a very median cornea in radius, 4352. We have a very low corneal astigmatism, only 0.38 a diopters of corneal sill. It's a very spherical cornea. Let's go down a little farther and we see the eccentricity. Note the E value of the flat meridian is 0.65, meaning the rate of corneal flattening of this eye is very normal. Median would be around 0.65. Then we look at the eccentricity or rate of corneal flattening along the steep axis, it's 0.53. There's a very small difference between these two. When the flat E and the steep E are relatively close together, that tells you the peripheral corneal shape is relatively symmetric. And that's seen another way with the sag differential attribute. It's telling you that the height difference between the flat axis of the eye and the steep axis of the eye is only six microns in height differential. Again, this peripheral cornea is relatively symmetric or spherical in shape. What else might we look at? Well, we can see the disease detection indices are all lit up in green, telling us this is an absolutely normal eye shape. With a glance to the attribute window, we learn quite a lot about this eye. For instance, we know that if we're fitting a rigid lens on this cornea, maybe a corneal GP, a GP multifocal, an ortho-K lens, that the eccentricity differences and the sag differential are saying the peripheral cornea is a very normal eye shape. The rate of flattening of the eye is very much within the middle of the bell curve. This patient probably doesn't need an abnormally flat or abnormally steep peripheral curve in a rigid contact lens. So there's actually quite a lot we can learn about this cornea beyond just that it's a spherical normal eye shape. Digging deeper into these attributes provide insights that can really help us in clinical practice. Let's review another case. Would you say that this patient is a keratoconic? Is this an inferiorly displaced cornea, a normal eye? Or are we seeing the earliest signs of corneal thinning developing? Let's take the axis line to the vertical, and we see some asymmetry on the graph down below, but let's go over to the attributes and see what we can learn. The K readings would tell us that it's a slightly steeper cornea, the corneal astigmatism, moderate, but here we see the eccentricity has gone up over our previous case. We have a 0.8 eccentricity. Generally, the threshold where we see keratoconus developing is around 0.8 or higher. And this patient is certainly teasing that threshold. When we go down to the sag differential, we notice that that depth difference in the periphery has gone up significantly in this case relative to our previous more spherical cornea. There's a 51 micron height difference between the flat meridian and the steep meridian, telling us our peripheral cornea is relatively toric 
even though our central corneal astigmatism is fairly mild. When we look at the disease detection indices, the colors appear to have changed. They're not all lit up in green, which would be considered normal. Yellow would be saying suspect, red would be saying abnormal, and green would be again normal. So this patient is appearing to show some signs of irregularity. Here's our next case. And clearly this is a patient that is abnormal in topographical shape. But let's focus in on the attributes window. We might start with the K readings. We have a cornea much steeper than average at 52 and a half diopters. There's a 10 and a quarter diopter central corneal astigmatism clearly a patient outside of the norm. The eccentricity has shot up much higher than our previous case, with a flat eccentricity of 1.14. Remember the threshold of where keratoconic eyes typically sit is 0.8 or higher in eccentricity, so this patient is well above that threshold. When we go down to the sagittal differential, we're up to 165 microns of difference between the flat axis and the steep axis. Clearly, this patient will require a specialty contact lens to be able to align to this eye shape with so much sagittal differential. When we look at the disease detection indices, they're all lit up in red, telling us in each case this patient is over the threshold of irregularity. If we were choosing to fit this patient in a scleral lens, how would we begin? One of the things we require in scleral fitting is the height of trial lens to place on the patient. And the MedMod helps us with the EH attribute or estimated height attribute. The first step is to enter the core diameter of measure of your scleral lens. The scleral lens I use is a 16.5 diameter lens that measures its height over 15 millimeters. Then I can look at the attributes across the 0180 meridian, the 3210, and the 150 330 meridian and see the height that the Medmont is estimating. When we take the average height of these three axes, it's approximately 4,600 or 4,700 microns. If we add the fluid layer that we desire between the lens and the eye surface of 300 to 400 microns, we should therefore be pulling a trial lens sagittal depth of 4,900 to 5,000 microns. This EH attribute can be very helpful in your scleral lens fitting practice to assist with choosing the correct first trial lens so you're not putting on multiple lenses on each patient. Let's finish with an orthokeratology case. Let's begin again with those K readings. Notice the cornea is a little on the steep side. Research has shown that orthokeratology tends to work easier on steeper eyes rather than flatter eyes. Therefore, just in radius alone, this patient appears to be a good candidate for orthokeratology. The corneal astigmatism is relatively low, again, making this a good candidate for ortho-K lenses. Then we go down to the eccentricity. We also know that higher eccentricity eyes tend to respond better to orthokeratology. And this patient has a higher than average eccentricity. Remember, the median with your MedMon is about 0.65. Therefore, in eccentricity, this patient also appears to be a good candidate for orthokeratology. When we go down to the sagittal differential, we see this patient has 19 microns of difference between the height of the flat and the height of the steep. This would suggest to us that we should use a symmetric, non-toric landing ortho-K lens. At around 30 microns, that's where a toric rigid contact lens typically performs better on your patients. So 30 microns or greater of sagittal differential, and we should be thinking toric. In this case, the patient is well below that threshold. A symmetric landing would be the preferred choice for this patient. 
Now you'll notice here that I've chosen to display the spherical aberration. This has value to us when comparing the pre and post orthokeratology topographies. Let's go over and select our post treatment map. Let's expand this window so that we can see the topographies and all of the attributes. Here on the left, we have our baseline topography with a spherical aberration value of 0.294 microns. When we compare that to the post-treatment spherical aberration, it's increased to 2.067 microns. There was a positive spherical aberration shift of approximately 1.7 to 1.8 microns. Research in orthokeratology tells us a positive spherical aberration shift of 0.8 or greater typically creates better myopia controlling outcomes. With the shift of 1.7 or more, we would expect this patient should have a very good myopia controlling outcome from orthokeratology. To add attributes to your display, click on the Arrange icon. Scroll down to view the many analysis options that the MedMont includes in its default inventory. Select any attributes you want to add by highlighting them and click the right arrow to move it over to the selected side so it will be visible during a map analysis at all times. You can remove attributes from your main window by highlighting it on the selected side and moving it over to the available or inventory side. Attributes can be placed into a user preferred order of display by highlighting the attributes and using the up or down arrows to position it as desired. After making any changes, click apply and OK to close the window. MedMont users can create their own custom attribute by clicking on the Add Edit button. Select New to begin the process of calculating a desired analysis or formula you want to apply to your collected MedMont maps or images. Have a look at the many attribute options in MedMont's inventory. Add the ones that will enhance your analysis and practice efficiency. I hope this video has been valuable to you. If you have any questions, please reach out to the Precision and Cardinal team. Thank you.